<clears throat> yes. We are live, flynubianqueen.com, flynubiankingtv.com. Make sure you listen live, or you could just log on later in a less greater. I'm Aaron Smith, the rapping professor. Ooh, keep the camera moving. I'm kind of fast. Today, we got the talk that talk. Fly Nubian business, you want to get your business right. Fly Nubian money, you want to get your money right. You want to get your shopping. Pop it. Shop FNQ.com. And let's get into it. Let's do it. Text Queens to 31996. You can stay in the mix. Like, subscribe, and share. Share, share. Make sure you do that right there. Ain't nothing to it. But we got to do it. Um, let's do it the right way. Don't like to be, I don't like to talk just to be talking. I want to make sure we give the information. I'm gonna give you the links. That's what I do too. I uh, it's not about monopolizing information. This is about the dissemination of information. That's what it's about. Boom. So, you know, and, and plus you can fact check, get you in the habit of not just listening to people bobblehead and get you in the habit of lo looking for yourself while you're hearing me. But yeah, you, you got your own brain, right? That's how I like to rock. Um, Tarana Burke is an activist best known for creating the hashtag Me Too that created a movement and raises awareness about sexual harassment, assault, and abuse. Burke was born on September 12th, 1973 in the Bronx, New York. Shouts out to everybody from the BX. I got a lot of family from that area and also um, Yonkers and formerly Co-op City. Salute, Trizer Loop and all that. And salute to people from the Throsneck Projects and salute to all those from Gun Hill, Gun Hill Road that are going to, um, let me get back to what we got to do. <laughs> Katona Park Day, I was going to say. I mean, y'all get it, y'all get it. That's what my pops and my mom's met. So just in case you're just wondering who's who and what's what when I'm talking. So back to Toronto. She was tragically uh, assaulted. She was raped as a teenager. These The incidents of her being assaulted and being violated at a young age inspired Burke to dedicate her life to improving the lives of girls going through similar hardships. In 1998, Burke gave birth to her daughter, Kaya, and raised her as a single parent. Burke's career started in Selma, Alabama, where she worked with the 21st Century Youth Leadership Movement, the Black Belt Arts and Cultural Center, and the National Voting Rights Museum and Institute. In 2003, Burke co-founded an African-centered rites of passage program for girls called Jendea Aza. Let's do it. Let's do it. The ways in which you have heard so much about our sister without in many cases hearing anything I just said about our sister is not your fault. It's not your fault at all. The issue is they will do to her what they did to Rosa Parks. They'll frame it like Rosa Parks is just some woman that was tired and she just happened to be there, happened to have some idea about sitting down. The rest is history. They won't tell you that she was a strategist. They won't tell you that she was an investigator. At one point, going door to door, researching, let me get the books, let's get the citations, about acts of violence against Black women. So there's a connection between Rosa Parks and Tarana Burke. If they really wanted to do it, they could do it right. If they really wanted to do it, they could do it right. But I'm going to do it right. I love you, my sisters. And it's been far too long that you shouldn't even have had to be protecting yourself from the very people that's supposed to be helping to protect you. At the dark end of the street, who's familiar? Who's familiar? Come on, somebody tell me they read it. Somebody tell me they know about it, right? Black Women, Rape and Resistance, A New History of the Civil Rights Movement from Rosa Parks to the Rise of Black Power, Daniel L. McGuire, At the Dark End of the Street. I'll put the link in there right to Amazon. I come to play no games. No, you speak on it. You, if you think Toronto Burke hates black men, you speak on it. Same way I'm giving links. You can do the same thing. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. We're not just jumping out. We, we, you see, you see it how we doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm credentialed. I do it a certain way. I don't just be like talk about this. No, no. 
I researched and I read and I took time to meditate and focus and fact check and cross reference. That's why when I bring it, it sounds different and it comes with a lot more citation. Now, if you got some, you bring them out and I'll discuss it. I'll respond to it, but I'm not going to deter what I plan to do. That, that's what we won't do. I'm not one of those type of people on, on YouTube. You got the wrong one. I have no idea what you're talking about, but thank you for inspiring me because now I can really turn up. So the book is called At the Dark End of the Street, Black Women, Rape and Resistance, A New History. So the history as you know it, right? A new history of the civil rights movement from Rosa Parks, didn't say from Martin Luther King Jr. It said from Rosa Parks to the rise of black power, Daniel L. McGuire, Daniel L. McGuire. Get this book, y'all, at the dark end of the street. Because one of the things the book talks about is how when these women were being violated, Rosa Parks was an investigator and would go door to door in the legacy and the tradition earlier, previously established by who? Who went door to door was finding out the truth about Ida B. Wells, right? Right? So she pulling the Ida B. Wells on him. So Ida B. Wells does some of this kind of work. Ida B. Wells refuses to get up on a train car and bites the man who tries to be racist towards him. Rosa Parks refuses to get, and she's an investigator. If you really want to tell this story, that's why we need people that are Afrocentric and located in, 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 the, in the love of African people as subjects in their own history, not as, as periphery or objects on the, the periphery or margins of European analysis. Because the way I just tied that together, you might not heard anybody ever do that. That don't make me deep. That just make me black. That don't make me deep. That just make me black. Who else would I think of when you're talking about going door to door, getting the truth out of a woman? I'm, I'm going to think Ida B. Wells. Who else I'm going to think about when you tell me a woman didn't want to give up and give up her seat because she felt it was a racist spot? I'm going to think Ida B. Wells and then Rosa Parks. So both of these women were investigators and both of these women were, were protecting African women and both of these women didn't want to get up and give up their seat. And both of these women were strategists and well-educated. Yeah, man. Don't let them cherry pick one piece of history out and give you no sense of, of time and place. That's why John Henry Clark, the master teacher, said it's like a compass. It shows you where you are in the world and in the universe and shows you your potential. You know, history is like a compass. It gives you direction. But you got to be able to read it right. You can't be like, what's the big deal with, with Noose Foof? Because you're reading the letters north, south, east, and west. <laughs> no, you got to know that. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Text Queens at 31996. Stay in the mix. Like, subscribe, or share. FlyNubianKingTV.com. FlyNubianQueen.com. Yeah, I thought that it was a statement made out of ignorance. One of the people said something about, say, try to flirt, hate black men. Like, all black men or just the ones sexually assaulting people? I think there's some nuances necessary to engage on a level that I'm trying to speak to the people at, at this point in time. Now, if you see me out in the corner, and I'm just like, hey, man, what are you doing right here? Hey, man, he's not as good as LeBron. Like, if you hear me, if that's the, then you jump in and be like, yo, man, talk about this. <laughs> oh, my God. They, they, they say, trolls, they resent original loving leadership. They resent original loving leadership. And I don't care if it's because it may, sometimes because they're racist, sometimes it's because they wish it was them. Sometimes they want the spotlight. They just the so-called deep people, wherever they go, they see somebody else making a couple points and they got to come in and try to direct their lecture. I don't do that. When it's time to be a student, I play my part as a student. When it's time to be a teacher, I take the floor. When it's time to yield my time, right? Like the title says, reclaiming me to reclaiming my time at the dark end of the street. This is necessary reading. Don't give me a whole Me Too movement and never give me this book. That's like you give me a whole 10 years of feminism and you never talk about Nanny from the Maroons. You never talk about Queen and Zynga, Nefertiti, Nafatari, Yaasantiwa, but you talk about women being powerful. I mean, I'm naming some of the most powerful women ever walked the planet Earth. But you want to give me Gloria Stein of a CIA asset and you want to talk about burning bras. No, Cletus, you're going to limp back. So let's keep that party going. Burke's career, I told you, started in Alabama. It was, it was when she was working with the, the organization um, that she started the Rights of Passage for, um, which evolved into a nonprofit called Just Be Incorporated. 
Just Be Incorporated, focused on the well-being of young women of color. It was when she was working at this organization that Burke first spoke the words, me too. It's 2006. When trying to empathize with a young woman who was at the time being abused by her mother's boyfriend. So she used her candor, she used her vulnerability, she utilized her testimony as a tool of healing. You know, don't, don't sit and see me behind this podium and think that I don't know what you're going through, my sister. So sister was speaking about being violated and she used it just like a, as a battle cry. You know, they have uh, signs and seals and signals and passwords and grips and there's ways to let people know who you are, whether it's light outside or even if. So she's on this battlefield trying to wage a war against inhumanity trying to wage a spiritual war through a human vessel against inhumanity and spiritual wickedness in high and low places. So she tells the sister while she's confessing her vulnerability and the, the stigma and the tragedy that she's endured. A young woman is speaking to Tarana and sister Tarana says, me too, to let her know. You know, like be be still. You know how, how they say the Christos, the Mahdi, the Magi, talk to the waters and told the waters and the waves to be still. Sometimes uh, the words from an elder, especially if they show themselves to be vulnerable. When an elder is not afraid to be vulnerable, not afraid to say I was young once. I think it was the comedian D.L. Hughley that was talking about the murder of Nipsey Hussle in, in a recent interview. And D.L. Hughley was talking about the murder of Nipsey Hussle. And he looked back with so much, so much regret. He said, you know, when I was 15, when I was a blood at the age 15, comedian D.L. Hughley, he said, I would have looked up to the man that killed Nipsey Hussle. I'll say it again. He said, when I was 15, I would have looked up to the man that killed Nipsey Hussle, rapper Nipsey Hussle out there in L.A. He said, putting in work for your set. You know, basically, that was admirable at that age, at that level of ignorance. They talk about other interviews where, where one brother said, when I was young, when I was like 15, what do you call them? Uh, what do they call them? Young ones. When I was one of the young ones, he said, I dreamed to be on Pelican Bay. He said, I dreamed to get life in prison, basically being a big shot, trying to call shots. From high. He said, that's what they would dream. He said, the people were so bad. Come on now. Y'all want to talk or y'all don't want to talk? Y'all want to talk or y'all want to tell you to talk? Black to me, let's talk. Let's talk. So when you're on this battlefield, you're trying to give signs to people. You're trying to let them know where you stand. You telling them, I was young once. I made mistakes. Stop being so high and mighty, hiding behind money and credentials and gray hair. If you was wearing a pencil skirt at the Uptown, or if you was at the Apollo watching back-to-back -back shows with James Brown, later on going to, to dollar parties or even quarter parties, some of y'all go back to dime parties. Y'all better stop playing with me red light special before Cooley High. If you was out there just like everybody else was out there, and it was White Owls instead of Vanilla Dutchess, then you need to talk to some people sometimes. Stop talking from your now perspective and identify the 17-year-old the them with the 17-year-old you. Get them acquainted and they might listen to you even in your winter and years. I'm trying to help somebody today. So she empathized with the young woman. Those words pushed her to work with and empower those who have endured sexual abuse in 2008. Birkin worked at the Art Sanctuary in Philadelphia. That's where I'm at right now. Shouts out to the Art Sanctuary, Philadelphia, right? In Pennsylvania. And later serves as a consultant for the 2014 Oscar nominated film Selma, which depicts the 1965 Montgomery Voting Rights Marches. Because, like we said, her career started in Selma, Alabama, where she worked with the 21st Century Youth Leadership Movement. See, the point I'm trying to make to you is this sister is no joke. This sister been putting in work for a long time. This sister dedicated her life to this work. Don't reduce this sister to this hashtag that somebody else tried to appropriate because they had a wave of their own. Don't do that. And let me, let me, let me, let me, let me practice what I preach. That's always good when you're talking, right? Hit like, subscribe, and share. We got a hundred some people in the room, 42 likes. Come on now, come on, let's get our math together. I love y'all, tough love is still love. FlyNubiaQueen.com, FlyNubiaKingTV.com. Make, make sure you live. Go on, text Queens to 31996. Like, subscribe, share. Stay in the mix. Do it like this. You want to get your biz right? FlyNubiaBusiness.com. Want to get your money right? FlyNubiaMoney.com. You want to get your shopping popping? ShopFNQ.com. And that's how we do log on. And let's get back into it. The sister was serious. Don't reduce it to a hashtag. 
And I'm saying this to you because when I minister to you, I minister to myself. I didn't go, but I should have went right behind the curtain. Once you know you're talking to a liar, you say, excuse me, partner, and you move on. You don't let Alyssa Milano and Steven Spielberg paying with Time's Up. You don't let them tell you who Toronto Burke is. You don't let them tell you what, what, what Me Too is. You a liar from the beginning. You have your father and the devil. You you look roaming up and down the world seeking who you, seeing who you could uh, enslave, deceive, and destroy, seeking whom you may devour. I got no time. Okay, how much money you got? How many movies you make? When it comes to my sisters, I will not be taking advice from you. I should have known better. Should have known better. Than... No, seriously. Because they make, they'll have you believe that Tarana Burke was just sitting at home on Twitter one day, came up with a hashtag, and is somehow in some twisted, like white Hollywood actresses adopting black babies and dressing them like they in third grade plays or like they slaves or something. That Tarana Burke is some kind of mascot for this white woman led Me Too movement. Stop me when I'm lying, not when I'm going hard. The way they frame the narrative is like, that's our mascot. This our movement. That's our mat. This sister been working probably since Alyssa Milano was still on. Who's the boss? No, I'm just kidding. Not that far back. Shout out to Tony Danza. Though. Tupac said he was a real one. Um, who's in the room? A. Jenkins, 1920. New to the show. You from Jersey? I graduated from Montclair, New Jersey. Montclair High School, Montclair, New Jersey. We used to go down to North to go to Dr. J's to get our sneakers. We used to be, you know, making sure the car ain't get taken in Irvington. Shouts out. I respect y'all, which I was taking the most cars. And I think y'all in Patterson was second back then. So, no, Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. Yeah, if you, yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was made in Philly, but I was born and raised in Jersey. So, salute. Hey, family, Paris, Pamela, Tammy, Sharon, straight paper. Love the name of... Uh, Maria Ortiz, Tammy Holloway, seen you before. Always got great commentary. Appreciate you for coming back. Pamela McCoy, stealing, killing, and destroying, right? So we can't let them define even a movement that they appropriate. You might be a good thief, but that don't mean you good with messaging. Even if I'm on your side, let me stop. So this is the Toronto Burke. I heard that my first point was for us. And like I wanted to say to my brother, I hope he stayed around. For us as black men, not to take the bait. Because they'll try to throw Tarana in there with these other people who do hate black men. We'll spin around and say something as ignorant as Tarana Burke hates black men. I can't wait to get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, though. Because there ain't no need to, like, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Because 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 the best way to show you apologize is change behavior. So if I used to be a brother that didn't understand how egregious it was to listen to certain lyrics in rap songs, if I didn't see with my third eye that I was being used as a tool to rule over my sisters by proxy, buying into a notion of masculinity, I'm not talking about toxic man. I'm talking about Eurocentric masculinity in the mind of an African. Woo! Now that's toxic. I'm not talking about whatever they talking about. Your voice too deep, your chest too high. No, no, no. It's shoulders back, chest up, stomach in, head up. You should be strikingly upright and have some, some dignity about you. I'm not talking about whatever they call it. Everybody in, in, the, in the Congo is, is toxic as far as you can compare them to some of these people out, out in, in England. They all kissing on each other. No, no, no. Different cultures. Different cultures. And, you know, who, who the benchmark for what masculinity should be? If it's the Zulus and the rest of them ain't even qualifying. Real talk. Um, but as men, we can't call ourselves Pan-Africanist, Afrocentric, Hebrew Israelite, Moorish, 5% nation, fruit of Islam. We can't pride ourselves on certain teachings and information. Children of the king, the most high God, he said, ye are God's child. Like We can't call ourselves any of this, but at the same time be as anti-African as to not recognize that the women, like I always say on that relief in the temple, hold up half the sky, like Thomas Sankara said. He didn't say 49%, right? Go look all the, I'm going to Cairo in August. Asar, Aset, Isis, Osiris, Horus, right? Man, woman, child, right? 
when Clarence 13X left the Nation of Islam and was teaching the nation, the five percent nation of gods and earths, they were talking about the sun, the moon, and the star, man, woman, and child, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, freedom, justice, and equality. Like, come on, man. Y'all know how we do it. Anything different ain't us. I'm not saying it's bad to be vilified. I'm just saying if you want to root it in African tradition, then saying battle of the sexes just is some foreign concept. That's why Yasantua said, if you the men won't fight, we the women will. We the women of Asante will fight. We will fight. Like we were trying to get to the stool and everything. And black men know from dating black women. Black women been fighting for. <laughs> if you tell, name me a black person that think black women can't fight, and that's a black dude that only date white girls. That's a black. <laughs> what even Biggie Small said? He was, she was. Throwing out his clothes and cutting them up, and she was all scared when the wind blows. Oh, I see my polos and timbos. Oh, all the money came my daughter. Try to call the cops on me. You know, about this is the struggle. It's all good, baby, baby. Oh. So, on this edition of FlyNubianQueen.com, FlyNubianKingTV.com, make sure you listen live and log on. We're going to try to get the language right, like Dr. King said. Because in order for Tarana Burke to properly reclaim her time, some of us that might have been in the way have it misconstrued or conflated the originator of a movement with the appropriators of a movement. Hello, somebody. It's time for true confessions. My, my analysis should have been more nuanced. But if you knew better, you do better and you make a video about it. You don't just learn something different and try to act like you always knew it and don't say nothing, don't tell nobody. No, if you're going to go on record with an analysis that further examination and research proves to be less accurate than the new information directs you to assess, then you be a man or a woman enough to say, hey, y'all, they kept throwing Toronto Burke in the mix with these white chicks, Alyssa Milano and, 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 and all. I, I started, be, I, I thought she was down with them. I thought wrong. I didn't know. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let's change the narrative on somebody just realizing that something isn't what they thought it was. The, the job of a scholar is to seek truth and accept it as what it is when he finds it. I thought this was the truth, y'all. I thought Tarana Burke could probably spend her life being a token black girl the way they put her up there. Like she, you know, uh, I used to tie her on, on, on Friends or something. I, I would have thought the way they try to my, my friend, like they, they do that. Toronto be there like, girl, please. I got work to do. But if you're not reading the vibe because you're too busy writing people off, you're too busy staying far away from the situation, now you want to deal with it because there's elements within the movement that do hate black men. There's elements within the movement that disproportionately target black men. There's elements within the movement that want to throw away sealed documents and depositions. They want to let people um, make documentaries, mockumentaries, excuse me, mockumentaries 10 years later, I choke on racism all the time, it makes me sick. <laughs> mockumentaries, one-sided to come at a ghost when they, when the same issues have been dealt with in a court of law based on due process. And when a black man goes to court and gets due process, then you got no business going back and trying to remake and remix and rewrite the history. FBI investigation of 11 years into Michael Jackson and it's a new day. So we need people who are willing to confront the truth, go through the issues for what they are. And, and one of the issues I realized doing further research was Tarana Burke got her stuff taken from them. She didn't volunteer. She wasn't friends with them. She ain't know them. She didn't know what their intentions was to do with the hashtag. She had, that was her life's work helping these kind of people. And primarily, let me read it again for the people who don't get it. The hashtag Me Too went viral and encouraged women and men to speak out about their past. I'm done playing. Let me go, let me go, because this is what I usually do. I was I was nice today, because I don't usually do it like that. When somebody say something, I usually be like, here's the facts until you can bring me back some contrary facts. You want to sit with these facts. We're not going back and forth with opinions and emotions, getting loud and then getting personal. We're not doing that. You're going to say something with no facts. I'm going to say something with a fact. Now you got to go back and bring me a fact. Or at least, you know, some substantiated cross-reference, right? But I, I got I got it all up already. Like we good. We good. We good. Boom. I'm gonna read this one first. 
Um, I got so many up. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Chicago Sun Times. Toronto Burton. Okay, how about this one? Huffington Post. Tarana Burke, Me Too is not a women's movement. Where's my brother? You still in the room, brother? Let's talk about this article and her quotes in the article. Because somebody got up in the room and said Tarana Burke hates black men. And the statement, I could prove in no limit of time, as the good brothers from the Nation of Islam said, we will knock the brains out of falsehood with unadulterated truth in no limit of time through actual facts and mathematics. So Mr. Pirate Brain, P Brain, maybe he's called, Tarana Burke hates black men, speak on that. No, I'm gonna speak on her own words that contradict that statement. We don't just jump out the window for the trolls. Tarana Burke, Me Too is not a women's movement. The activists explain that the anti-sexual violence movement is for people of all genders. Somebody took it and ran with it and did something different. They genderized it and racialized it. That wasn't her. If she racialized anything, she was doing it more specifically for women of color, the people who she serviced and worked with most directly. I read you her bio. She was starting whole organizations just for most or for black women and, and other women of color. So when white women take her movement, that doesn't reflect the way she was ever getting down. Me Too creator Tarana Burke wants to come. And I, I, you got to, this is how you apologize for not knowing better. So, brother, you still in the room, pirate brain? You need to go ahead and say something, too. I'm going to lead by example today. When you learn better, then you say, oh, I didn't know. I heard this. And I say, no problem. I've been in, I've been in that same situation. But when you, when you knew better, you do better. Don't ever, talk, don't ever talk down against a sister without doing some research. In the street, you won't call nobody a snitch without no paperwork half the time. If it's another killer, drug dealer, rapist, you won't even go out and violate and defame their name without having some evidence and some research being done. You won't even talk bad about a drug dealer who's killing the community without having research to say they a snitch first. But you'll jump out the window on your sister. Platform got 70,000 subscribers, one of many. Shouts out to Boyce Watkins. You got one. Platform might have over 500,000 collectively throughout all the platforms influenced by, participated with, or owned by Boyce Watkins and the crew. You will get on a platform of this magnitude dedicated to the upliftment and liberation of African people, my room in particular, and just jump out the window with no citation, no reference, no evidence, and just accuse a sister of hating black men when she's worked all her life for black people. If you look out for black women, you are helping black men. Who bails us out? Who holds us down? Who takes our misplaced aggression? Who, who acts like a sar in a set? If you know the story of a sar in a set, his jealous brother, Killed him, killed the saw, cut him up into many pieces, but they couldn't find a phallic symbol that's, that's represented by, by the Tekanu, later called the obelisk, later called the Washington Monument as a cheap replica. But they've been doing that for a long time, right? Not having the right pieces of equipment and trying to use it. Let me, let me do it a different way. Let me, let me keep it family, let me keep it PG. So the point I'm making is, his wife, his woman, well before any Humpty Dumpty stories, put a SAR back together again and then used the Tekkenu to replace the phallic symbol they couldn't find that symbolized regeneration and virility and put that brother back together. I would argue this. So people new to my channel, I'm going to let you know what I, what I do right now. I'm going to tell you a story in a way you might have never heard it before because some of y'all might be stone cold Afrocentrists. Y'all might have been listening to everybody from, from Bobby Hemmett to John Henry Clark to Yosef Ben Yakinan to Asa Hilliard to Amos Wilson to, to Kwanzaa Kun Jufu to, to well, you know, y'all y'all got it. Y'all been listening to it and y'all ready to do it. Some of y'all been to Egypt, but listen to this. I argue that not just on a cosmological every so many years access of the earth lining the pyramids of Giza with the plants and the stars. You heard all that. I'm talking about on a basic lower level, like boys in the hood. Because some people might never compare boys in the hood to a star in a set, but I'm gonna give you a point of entry. Had a sister say, when and where I enter, right? I'm gonna give you a place of entry. You can see some brothers with some rolling paper, some video games, some $300 sneakers, and they'll be watching boys in the hood. And when it's over, you can say, yo man, check this boy out. And I'm gonna say, boys in the hood, you remember this scene? 
the racist black cop holds Cuba Gooden Jr. down on, on the hood of the car and says, I hate little just like you, right? Assuming he was in a gang, putting a, putting a gun in this young man's face. He comes home. You can still hear choppers, ghetto birds above lurking. You still see siren lights. and You hear sirens and see the lights, right? He comes in, triggered, post-traumatic slave sin. He, he comes in and he starts cussing. And he starts swinging that misplaced aggression that sometimes connects and hits our sisters. We need to do a video about that too, but one video at a time. Today's about to run a bird. Brothers come home with a whole lot of bent up aggression, pent up aggression, pent up aggression that leaves them bent up and aggressive. <laughs> Billy Rock with that. But the, the brother Cuba Gooden Jr. was cussing and swinging at the air, fighting invisible demons, fighting principalities in high places that were acting like low lives that were wearing badges and guns, right? Nia Long lets him in. That's the first thing she does. Nia Long takes a, a page out of Jodeci's book, don't talk, just listen, <laughs> right? Nia Long allows him the space to deal with what he has to deal with as a man in that moment. And then Nia Long is there to embrace him and use that divine feminine energy to watch, wait for it, full circle, put him back together. And some people might be like, oh, well, they was kissing, they had sex. And then you better study Newt and study how that, that sun Ra goes into Newt at night and you can't see the sun in the mythology, right? in the cosmology, and you see Newt with the, represented by the feminine figure with the stars, with the, her, her palms touching the earth, and she's in an ark, and then you see her toes touching the earth. We talked about the goddess Newt before, but I'll put it in the chat. Somebody might be new to the room today, and that's why you need to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that button, flynubianqueen.com, flynubiankingtv.com. Listen live and log on. If you don't have that app, you know where to go. Make sure you text Queens to 31996 to stay in the mix. I'm giving you the goddess Newt. The goddess Newt. I like this one right from the relief. Newt is the barrier separating the force of chaos from the ordered cosmos in this world. This sister, this divine feminine aspect, this astrological emblematic iconography representing the feminine, the deified, and the cosmological, astrological. And they say this, the, what's in the stardust is the same thing that's in us. So when you watch Kendrick Lamar and Sizzle talk about all the stars are closer, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. And I'm going to give you right here. Boom. And this is how I follow it up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they will not let me put that one in? I don't know why. It was too long? Was it too long? Let's see. Don't start doing it again. Remember last time they wouldn't let me put nothing in there. Don't do it. Is there a limit? Did I put three or something? I'm going to go right to that. Let me see if I can do the, just the, the Google page. Ain't not let me try nothing again. Okay, forget it. Forget it. I just write it. I just take the first sentence and then you can you can take it right from the thing yourself. But yeah, so so we talk about the goddess new because people might try to reduce the power and the spiritual connectivity of intercourse by saying, oh, but in the movie, you know, the way that she helped them was there. No, 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 it's much deeper. In Egyptian mythology, Nut was the sky goddess. She's the daughter of Shu and Tefnut and was one of the Enid. Uh, the sun god Ra entered her mouth after the sun set in the evening and was reborn from her vulva the next morning. She also swallowed and rebirthed the stars. She was the goddess of death and her image is on the inside of most of the sarcophagi as well. So, you know, the Pharaoh entered her body after death and was later resurrected. So through the divine womb of a woman, not only is life generated, not only does the magic of conception take place, right? She's saying here that this whole notion of life, death, and resurrection is emblematic of this process. So even when we study the period of a woman in the ministry, we're talking about a flushing and a fleshing out in preparation for another miracle. You ever get ready for company to come over and you clean the heck out your house? They try to make the natural processes of a woman as something sordid, something unseemly, something unclean. But the process in and of itself represents the cleaning. 
and represents the highest level. What what's a higher level of communication than when a sperm when when sperm goes into a woman and seeks out something that is never seen? We have to be talking about divinity. We ain't talking about leading by example. The sperm ain't do this before. That's like we talk about salmon's going upstream, laying the eggs and dying. How does salmon downstream get the message? You got to come on up here. Don't reduce this. Some people have pejorative names that they refer to women as, and they use terms that are supposed to refer to their anatomy. They backwards. They got to get their African mind back so they can appreciate it. So when the sister tells them to go to the store and get some, they won't be ready to faint and complain and be embarrassed. They'll be proud to spend time and be in company of, of the only entity on the planet Earth that can regenerate human life. Not a cow, not a, not a, a, a curry coffee maker. No, no, no. The only place you go, not even a test tube. They say, yeah, but not even a test. Seriously, seriously. So as a result of this severe miseducation, I was more susceptible to the deception about my sister Tarana Burke. But if I had only known that like a saw in a set, the putting back together is something that black women have been doing for black men and black families since time immemorial. I'm arguing that when you go out and you get pulled over, when you suffer microaggressions, when they telling you they're not going to hire you or let you go because they found out about your criminal past, when they stare at you when you get in the elevator like you ain't got more money than them, and even you took their purse, where are you going to go? We're in a darn elevator, stupid, right? When you deal with all that on a day-to-day -day basis, and sisters, y'all got your own set of unique challenges, I'm not negating the place of value. Now. I'm just saying when brothers a lot of times go through a world that won't respect their full humanity or accept the reality of their manhood, it is when they come home like that mythical depiction from, from ancient times gone by in classical African civilization, the foundation, we're talking about Ma'at, right? That the woman plays the role and puts him back together. All set every day, she's cooking, she's working, she's cleaning, she's nurturing, she's tending to the children. That's why when you study the MGT, Muslim girls training, they learn how to sew. They learn how to cook. They learn about the nature of a man and a woman. They learn about various love languages. There's certain things that men love to hear that some women don't really care too much about. I don't know too many women that did that for He just better tell me I'm strong. I mean, like physically, he better, he better tell me I'm lifting these cows. I don't hear too many women talking like that. You know, there's different things we need. We need to, let, let me get, the point is, from residual effects of my miseducation of this Negro. I didn't do the, the due diligence to make sure I found out who my sister was before I just associated her, that, her with those who had associated themselves with her. She didn't go seek out them, they sought her out. That's like seeing me on a plantation or my ancestors, the first Smiths. That's like seeing them on a plantation, you meet the master and now you think you know the people on the plantation. They like, bro, we have been trying to escape. You might want to talk to us. We on the same page. Don't be judgmental and throw us in the in the in the hole. No, we ain't with Mr. Smith. He just be beating us, so we just use the name. We trying to live, but we plotting and planning and strategizing like Tupac. Oh, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. So yes, and I hope she don't treat me like Lisa, Lisa, and um, for some D's, right? All cried out. Apology not accepted. Add me to the broken heart you collected. Oh, <laughs> no, don't do me like Lisa Lisa Toronto. I'm on record saying I ain't know, but now I do. That's all I can do. That's all you can do is admit it when you didn't know it, right? So back to helping my brother. She says it's not a gendered movement. Me too found Toronto Burke says that, that in Huffington Post. I put it in there already by Alana Vagianos. Tarana Burke, Me Too is not a women's movement. Me Too is not a women's movement, Burke said during the Times 100 Summit in New York City on Tuesday. Yes, it was women that came forward and talked about it. Yes, it was about women in Hollywood initially coming forward. But men's first role in this movement is as survivors. 
the light they don't never want to put on men. They act like a man ain't never been touched in the world. That's why the Catholic Church still popping the way it is. And I said before, if that was the, the, the Morris Science Temple and they got allegations like the Catholic Church, there wouldn't be no Morris Science Temples. It'd be underground. It'd be underground movement. They drop a bomb like the move organization here on Osage Avenue in Philadelphia, May 13th, 1985, still trying to free Mumia. Come on now. They so busy acting like boys don't get touched on. They got their own sons and daughters. Oh, there they are. You, you see the statistics for the for the boy scout, the boy scouts? If you're a boy scout, no offense. But I do got it. I got it. I gotta give it how I get it. Um, the latest statistics are staggering. Boy scouts, sexual assaults. Yeah, I, I read a recent article I want to share with the family. Six hours ago, the list of Boy Scout leaders accused. I had one that was showing the victims. This is CNN updated at 7.45 today. 7.45 today. I'll put it in there. Let me see. Please, I, um, if there's any moderators, let me know what I need to do if I have any trouble with this. Because I, I got to get the people these links. I got to get the people these links. No, we don't want no, no sound, no nothing. We don't want nothing from you. Don't even try it. You ain't flagging nothing I'm doing. So look at this here. This is today, y'all. Hot off the presses. Somebody said, I got three boys, A. Jenkins. You'll never put them in it. And those are the kind of conversations we need to have with each other. We don't, we, 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 ooh, we can't afford to be a live and let live people. We can't afford to be a live and let live people. We can't afford as a communal people, knowing a village raises a child to work. I am because we are the African problem. We can't afford to be a you just do you and I'll do me people. It could cost us. There you go. It, it showed up. That's the CNN article that just came out today. List of Boy Scouts leaders of sexual abuse has nearly 3,000 more names than previously known. I'm going to read the title again. Text. Text Queens at 31996. Fly Nubian King TV.com. Fly Nubian Shop FNQ.com. Get your shopping. Popping. I'm not going to lie. That, that affected me. That affected me deeply. The list of Boy Scout leaders accused of sexual abuse has nearly, this means somebody saw the list now, 3,000 more names than previously known. So they was compiling a list of thousands of people. They ain't once they I never remember remember them once trying to shut down this organization. They steady trying to they, they don't even try to shut down the Ku Klux Klan. They try to shut down the Nation of Islam. I don't know if I'm reading this whole thing, y'all. I gave y'all a link. I'm not gonna do too much with it. The Boy Scouts of America believe more than seven thousand of its former leaders were involved in sexually abusing children over the course of seventy two years. That's 7,000. That's a thousand. Wait, that's, I can't even get it right. You get what I'm saying? 700 people every year. So, for every year. According to newly exposed court testimony, about 2,800 more leaders than previously known publicly, the Boy Scouts identified more than 12,000 alleged victims in the time period from 1944 to 2016. That's all I'm going to do. I gave y'all the whole thing because I love y'all and I respect y'all. But sometimes you got to guard your brain and your spirit. And it's not the abuse that's troubling me by itself. The abuse is extremely troubling and it's tragic. But what's troubling me is this means entire agencies. Who, do, it, who, who kept a record? First of all, you got to know what's going on in every chapter just to compile a record. Or you have have various agencies reporting to a central agency or a central source of data collection. So somebody who had access to these chapters and had access to some of their most personal and private information did nothing to stop it. That's why the Girl Scouts tried to just join the Boy Scouts to monitor. That'd be a good reason, right? Because unless and I'm going to look it up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I'm going to put um, percentage of pedophiles. Men. How many are men? How many men? Um, I think it was about 90, was it? I couldn't find it. 
proportionate heterosexual. They got heterosexual versus versus queer. No, no. I want how many men? How many women? I don't see it. If y'all see it, let me know. Cause I don't see it, but I always hear that. But you know, widely disproportionately men, widely disproportionately white men. We already know what it is. That's why weed will get you locked up longer than touching on some children. Sometimes you you just gotta register sometimes with the children. They'll register you and let you out. But back to our show. So Tarana Burke says that Me Too is not a women's movement. I'm gonna give you all of them. I'm just gonna give you all of them so you can study and do a whole nother lecture yourself. I'll never, I'll never want to monopolize no information. If I go today, I want you to have everything I had. Ain't no you take, you can't take nothing with you, right? Here is Me Too movement is not just about white men. Tarana Burke tells HBCU students. I'm gonna give you that one. There you go. You gotta do research. See, I'll do all the research and I'll just give it to you. You ain't gotta pay for nothing, you ain't gotta do nothing. Tarana Burke tells, talks to Pittsburgh crowd about the roots of Me Too and her response to the viral takeoff. And she said things about appropriation and how she had original intentions and some instances weren't being fulfilled. I'll give you that one. Cause now like my brother early in the room, now if you wanna make an, if you wanna voice an opinion after this, it's different. It's an educated assessment based on extensive research, right? There is no model survivor. This is when the people who were part of the Me Too movement got caught in their own lies and got accused of sexual assault. But Tarana Burke, was, they, they had it look like she was just caping for these white sisters because that's when they tried to promote the narrative, like the black savior, black girlfriend, like the one who stood up in the hearings and you know made it look like Trump wasn't racist. The one black lady said, she's not, not racist. She works for him, right? So they positioned Tarana Burke the same way they positioned Colin Powell when he tried to make us think about weapons of mass destruction. He had a little little two for five vial. He was like, this is this is the powder. And then they made Colin Powell look crazy. And Colin Powell obviously believed him and separated himself from them for the rest of his life as a result. You'll never see him. I ain't seen him in a picture with Bush since then. Since they put him up there to do their dirty work and lie to the people after he did all that killing and marching and soldiering and training. And hey, he said, I might be a killer, but don't push me to be a liar. <laughs> I ain't a killer, but don't push me. No, no, they, 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 people will position you differently than how the creator positions you. People will try to position you different than your divine assignment. So you got to ask yourself, who's your boss? Shout out to Melissa, Melissa Milano, who's the boss. See what I did there? Who's your boss? You like that, right? So no, no, you got to ask yourself, even when you're at work, don't forget who your boss is. You might have a supervisor, but who's the owner? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might have a supervisor who calls themselves a boss. Just like the Pope can call himself the personification of, of God. But if you haven't met your maker face to face, you wouldn't be like, oh, where's the Pope at? So you might have somebody who watches you and has some influence over your check. I got it. Boss. But you got somebody who can count the hairs on your head. They said the human body is doing millions of functions every day, every hour, without you doing anything. From the breathing to the nutrients to the blood to the brain to the synapse to the neurons to the to the joints. To the, come on, man. Come on. There's so much going on in your body you got nothing to do with. I'm talking about the, the one who got that started. The power and the force and the one who did that. So if you know what your job is, then you know where you should be. And people can't position you the same way when you stand in firm in, in, in the word and in your purpose or in your, come on, in your divine assignment. Even if they call you out your name, even if they come amongst you to devour your flesh, then they're just going to stumble and fall. Giants do fall. Renee, while I agree with the idea that Me Too is targeting black men, I understand that. My fear is that actual abuse are being given cover. Thank you, Renee. I appreciate the nuanced analysis because that's what I'm trying to provide as well. I'm trying to admit the disproportionate attention given to black men, but I'm also trying to pay attention and give light to sisters like Tarana Burke who dedicated their whole lives primarily to people of color and issues of sexual assault and sexual violence and not, not even genderizing it, making it shows about victims and abusers and the fact that she got put into this appropriated movement that she gave no permission for them to even take the direction that they did. And now she's being affiliated with them in a way that she should not be culpable for. Nuance and delineation. I say it all the time. People are not baseball cards. 
They are not locked in one frame of existence and reference. They are not two dimensional and they are not frozen in time, unable to escape the confines of a single moment or identity. That's bottom block talk. I say it's like a game of Jenga. Well, I take them top blocks off and I could just take the bottom one down if I'm trying to end the game. If the game's already over, you are not, you want to see the tower fall? Will you take down the top blocks or the bottom? If it's racism, if it's capitalism, if it's rampant, taking the bottom, it's bottom block talk, man. People are not baseball cards. That's why I'm so adamantly opposed to the cancel culture. If one day you see me make a video a day for years and you hear I made a mistake as a human being, please don't write off my 500 videos. There's no need to. It makes no sense. It's not even good strategy. The FBI was neutralizing, mischaracterizing, discrediting, right? Committing assassinations on, having agent provocateurs infiltrate. They still kept the breakfast program like Operation of Wacky Doctors Game, Butterfingers, right? They still would take out the little bit that's good. You got to be able to be nuanced and delineate between what's beneficial to you and what you need to oppose in order to get your agenda fulfilled. They said, we can use that part. But they want you to throw out Bill Cosby with all every season of, no, give him a box set back. Denise ain't do nothing. No, no, give me no, give Rudy a check. Give Rudy a check. Rudy ain't do nothing. We are human. We make mistakes. I, I, I please, please believe it. I am with you. But sincerely, she, so when one of the Me Too people got caught being human and wet themselves, she didn't defend them, but she just said, there's no model survivor. Just because I'm a survivor doesn't mean I'm an angel. It means I should be um, given a certain degree of empathy and respect based on what I went through. I should be encouraged to not repeat the behavior because oftentimes people who were hurt hurt people, right? Let's keep this party going. How about this one here? I, I, I might leave that at that. I might. I might. Like, oh, yeah, let me do that too. Thank you for the heads up, uh, Pamela. Like, subscribe, and share. We're getting close. We got 136 people in the room. We got 106 likes. So y'all been stepping it up with the thumbs. Y'all been doing, doing, doing it big with the thumbs. I was at um, Rensley or Polytechnic Institute in Albany or Detroit, New York, just outside of Albany, just this year. And we were talking about, I talked about it on a different video too. The men on campus, shout out to anybody who went to college, HBCUs especially. I'm repping Temple University, but I'm black. So I know I have an obligation and a certain connection to HBCUs. And I should always make sure to support them in every way possible. It's not a gang culture. It's not bloods and crips. Just because I went to Temple don't mean I'm so stupid that I don't know that at one point HBCUs is all we had. And they produced some of the greatest minds in black history. From W.B. Du Bois to... Mark, Don, uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, to, he, he goes, the list goes on. Jane Bolin, for those who understand about the history of judges and things like that. The founders of some of these black Greek letter organizations. You know, I said some, well, all of them went to college, but most of them went to black colleges. Um, let me go. Okay, I love my HBCU. Shout out. Shout out, shout out where you're from. All right. Um, much more your way from Charlotte, North Carolina. Bethune Cookman is in, is, is in trouble, really? That's the latest one. And this is why we had this conversation about reparations. Cause we fighting for it was Brown, it was a Morris Brown, a Morris College, Morris College. It was um, Cheney University. Every year, somebody different that should have never had problems in the first place if things were just half fair. If things were just half fair. But the point I was making to the students out there, just talk about Tarana Burke and how you know she's reclaiming part of. Let me let me sum it up though. Part of Tarana Burke reclaiming her movement is having a counter movement of her own based on the principles and ideals and direction instituted by the initial intent behind the phraseology when she first thought it up. She needs a movement to lead. She's not going to be able to take back her movement from an entire functioning movement until she generates enough support. I used to like when Stokely Carmichael did this. He talked about people um, end up wanting to be like their oppressor. Right. Um, Tarana Burke needs our support. That's the moral of this lecture today. She needs black men to start talking, stop talking on the side of their neck, saying nonsense. No offense to the to the to the, the viewer today personally, but there's nothing that I've researched that said Tarana Burke is in any way behind the disproportionate attention given to black men from the me, from the white centered Me Too movement. There's nothing that I, 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 don't, I don't hear. I, I watch her talk. I watch interviews. I've studied her work. I did the whole bio from her being in Selma to her being in Pennsylvania. To her, I, she does not have this history. 
we need to at least unify with the people trying to do something right. I always argue like my teacher, the great Dr. Malefikete Asante, the first person in the world to create a PhD program um, in African-American studies, the first person on the planet, not even in Africa, could you get a doctorate in African-American studies until Dr. Malefikete Asante did it here at Temple. And what he always argues is we need to start using phraseology like critical mass. We don't, people say black people need to get together, not all of us, not the Eugene Roberts of the world, other informants helped to get Malcolm set up. Not, not, not William O'Neill, who helped to destroy the chairman, Fred Hampton Jr. Oh, the chairman, Fred Hampton. And salute to you know, his son, chairman, Fred Hampton Jr. Alive and well. I interviewed him on WRD, independent black media out here in Philadelphia on the radio. But no, no, we don't need everybody. Just because you're black don't mean you should be here. But a critical mass of conscious people. We need a critical mass. So I talked to the students and I said to them, you know that brother that'll act like he know you at two in the morning, but act like he don't know you at two in the afternoon. I don't mean to give anybody flashbacks. <laughs> Somebody about, ooh, you better tell it. Shame the devil. If you can't say, oh, me, say, oh, my. <laughs> and if you can't say, oh, my, say, oh, me, because it might have been, it could have been me. It should have been me. If it wasn't for them thoughts. <laughs> no, but seriously. Brother will walk past you on campus, sit in class with you, don't, don't help you with no work, don't say nothing to you, see you at a party, talk about something. Then we got class together. What? I don't know why I did the house party dance. I just took it back to like 1994. I just, I don't just, I just, <laughs> I just did the house party thing with Regina. Remember, Regina? <laughs> okay, back to what I was saying. This whole notion of doing certain things in public and in private. This is what fuels a lot of the behaviors that we discuss today. Bullies are fueled by silence as well as fear. Well-meaning people, like Dr. Uh, King says, you know, the hottest parts in Haiti, to paraphrase previous intellects, are reserved for those who in time of moral crisis maintain their neutrality. You stand by and idle, stand idly by and do nothing. Then your idol is fear. Your idol is complacency. Your idol is apathy. That's right. I believe it. Slavery behavior, right? When they had the buck breaking process and we would stand there and watch the most rebellious among us get raped, get violated, end up getting checkered, whip them this way, whip them that way. So chunks of skin in the form of squares would come off. They called it checkering. And then they would sometimes, like with Harper's Ferry and Nat Turner, put their heads on sticks along the highway so people could see what happened to the people. And we would stand idly by. We would stand idly by. Stand idly by. Yep, I do believe that. I believe Bill Cosby's deposition got, got its, its thrust from being reopened, even though it's not even due process or part of the rules of evidence or anything like that, because of me too. I don't know what that has to do with the topic of hand trying to burke, but I agree with you. I would like to say that. We don't agree, don't we do not disagree. And I think that's pretty much a, a provable fact that without me too, you would not be able to convict Bill Cosby with no evidence, no physical evidence. So what do we do when we see a problem? I'm saying we need to come out of her legion, right? There's this pseudo-feminist, really just racist with vaginas because they never had that same energy with Sandra Bland or with enslaved African women for 250 years. They never ran off the porch and said, oh, she got a vagina too. Let me go help out. I don't know one instance in human history where a European woman ran to the defense of an African woman tackling a slave master, standing in the way of a lash, taking the whipping for her. I never remember sisters standing in solidarity based on anatomy in the history of this country ever until the so-called 1960s feminist, seemingly CIA MK ultra project nonsense CIA agent operative assets like Gloria Steinem got involved in the picture. They never shed blood for you. We messed up. We left you high and dry. We left you vulnerable. That's how we got here. We're going to own that for the rest of our lives. But there's been many a time, like Tupac said, I think it's time to kill for our women. Right? There's a lot of brothers that done shed some blood and spilled some blood for some sisters. Even just outside the club. <laughs> no, but these white women ain't do that for you. Why you, why you, why you go over there? Why you, what you doing over there? Right? What you doing? What you doing with them? What you, you, why are you marching over there? Why aren't you marching over here? But more people need to get behind people like Tarana, Tarana Burke. This, I'm not saying you agree with everything the sister says and does. 
That's not what that's not what the agreement is about. I'm saying like to touch and agree, like what Malcolm said, put our religion in the closet. We don't even believe the same stories about how we got here, where we're going when we die. Fundamental questions and thoughts and, and ways of viewing and being that dictates our faith and, and, and if we think we're even coming back. We don't gotta agree on none of that, but we can still get some work done together. That's what I mean when I say we need to agree with Toronto Tar Burke. So we can come in the room and flesh things out and then be free to disagree without being disagreeable. This just ain't do nothing to prove. There's a, there's sports players that have been convicted of rape or accused of rape. They admitted it, but then to some, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to name everybody's name, Rothenberg and all that. But I'm saying, seriously, you got people who have knocked their fiance out in elevators, forgiven. You got people who have literally shot people, got put back on the team, punched their wives in the head and got all kind of abuse recounts and got suspensions, not even put off a team. Y'all don't stop watching the sport. Y'all still like the same athlete. Like, don't, don't, don't come in this room and tell me why you can't rock with Toronto Burke. You're going to have a hard time. Cross-examination going to be a mother. Matter of fact, it's going to be a father. Leave the sisters out of that. It's the problem now. We so accustomed to using the sisters as pejoratives and not as the essence and emblematic uh, symbol of divinity. Like we used to back with Newton and back with Isis and Osiris. and all. Like, say, we got it. We're going to get the language right tonight. Exactly. A white woman is very dangerous to black community, especially if they're racist. She's a gatekeeper of the white supremacy. Yeah, yeah, Regina's on it. Because that's because they that's why they marvel at how Trump got 52% of their vote. We don't marvel at that. We like a lot of people is very, very, very red. Like, you know, they in it just like the men. Text Queens at 31996. Make sure you stay in the mix. Fly newbie and King TV.com, fly newbie and queen.com. Make sure you listen and log on. If you don't have that app, you know where to go. Download an app like you know. I'm Aaron Smith, the rapping professor. I'm a, a tenure track professor at Temple University. That means I'm going up for tenure in a couple of years. That's why I stay here with the books and most of my videos are here. I'm not trying to stun on you. I'm just trying to inspire people and make sure I stay focused on what I need to do in my life, which is secure a job for life so that I don't have to worry about, like with YouTube, saying the word black too many times and trying to demonetize you. Because Facebook and YouTube is doing that's a whole I hope I, I hope a lot of people on Fly Nubian uh, Queen and Fly Nubian King TV is doing that video about Zuckerberg and about YouTube. You can't even say race anymore without them risking, um, you know, flagging your videos and stuff. If you say racist, then they might treat you like you are. That's how bad the attack on free speech and what we call in my department or my profession academic freedom has become. The big picture divide and conquer. I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's what always been, right? And that's what's being done. And we as a people need to stop it. We do. And that's that's why I did the video today, sincerely. Because it was like, I, I never blasted Toronto Burke. I never hated her. I just conflated what she was doing and what she created with those who had appropriated it and ran with it and didn't have the same level of cultural or even economic class based. I don't believe in class like that. We're coming up saying, as far as them, class based sensitivities. I had her over there with them because she was standing there at podiums. I mean, optics could be deceptive. I'm not saying they're not culpable, they're not responsible in any way for the fact that I was deceived. But if I'm gonna call myself a historian or a researcher or an academic, I have a different obligation. I should be held to a different standard. I can't just say things because I feel like saying them. That's like, I don't know whether you're a preacher or the certain responsibilities you have to your community. When you occupy a certain space with a certain platform, to whom much is given. And I accept the challenge wholeheartedly. I have to do more than the average person, even just to state my personal opinion, because it carries a certain amount of weight. And you're going to assume my opinion is backed by some degree of fact, simply because of the position I, I, I uh, occupy in society. You're not going to think I just woke up and said, um, North Korea should really think. No, no, no. You know, I read some, a few things before I say it. Please listen to yes and love one another. So. I was out there at Rensselaer Polytech Institute, and usually I do a lot of rapping when I'm on here, but there was this piece I did called That Ain't Love. And I was like um, asking a sister to try to redefine what she thought was love in order to get her to understand what hatred looks like. Because if you think that hatred is love, if you think somebody being jealous and grabbing you up and yelling in your face is how they show affection, don't, 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 don't think it's crazy now. Come on, come on. Some of y'all know people like this. Some of y'all grew up people like this. They like they being a little jealous. No, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I said, that ain't love. 
Why is he treating you the way that he's been treating you? Instead of loving you, he's hurting you and beating you. It's driving me insane because every time I'm seeing you, I see pain inside. And it makes me want to cry. Cause that ain't love when he tells you lies. That ain't love if he makes you cry. See, that ain't love when he puts you down. That ain't love, you need to leave him now. Help somebody. <laughs> now, just the other day, I saw you both walk in my way. You couldn't speak to me cause he had made you so afraid. I looked behind the shades and saw the evil scars he made just below your eyes. And it makes me want to cry. Cause that ain't love when he tells you lies. That ain't love when he makes you cry. See, that ain't love when he puts you down. See, that ain't love. We need to leave them now. Now, if you leave where you're tolerated and go where you're celebrated, our sister has dedicated her whole life to victims of sexual assault and abuse, dedicated her whole life disproportionately to advocating for people of color, dedicated her whole life, even in the face of having her movement appropriated and people making millions. She could have been petty. She could have flooded with lawsuits. She could have started dragging people, got emotional and reactionary. She got in where she could because she said the work is more important than me as an individual woman. The work is more important to me as an individual woman. I will put ego aside for community first, and I will deal with the issues from within, one by one, precept upon precept. They ignore poor women, not enough attention to black women. It's not a strictly genderized movement. Men should be first considered as, as, as survivors. She, she's doing the work. She's damn near sitting behind the door for us as we throw toils and snares at her back. I don't know what her Twitter is. Get on it and say... Then a brother was on here and he admitted that he didn't know the full story and he came into a different level of understanding about you, sister, and he's trying to help other people to do the same. If you don't support your frontline soldiers, what good are you to the revolution and liberation of African people and United States of Africa and the pursuit of reparations? You can't even respect somebody on the front line. I don't care. What, yo, if you out, if, you, if I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm up behind the camera talking. Anybody out there right now, deference, hats off to you. Maybe not with accuracy about the information, but as far as your level of contact with, with the issues I'm theorizing about, inciting references about, you on the ground, man, doing the real work. Tarana Burke has been on the ground, front lines, in the field, doing the hard work for decades, man. That sister shouldn't only be left alone and not vilified, demonized, or conflated with the racist, femi feminist. That, that, no, she should be exalted. In the tradition of Ida B. Wells, who was over there investigating, found out it wasn't a lot of rapes. It was a lot of swirling. A lot of the white women wanted to be with them brothers. And when they got caught, they would yell rape and the brother would get killed. So to Ida B. Wells. And when her friend got murdered and he tried to come for her and they came to the burn down the print press and everything, she had still already got her red record done. She wasn't there to be killed. She told the other black people, just get up out of here. Leave them to their own racism. See how, see how it deals. You know, see how it helps them. The economy was falling. All kind of stuff happened as a result of us leaving. She figured the whole thing out. You're insecure. You're weak. You're scared. And you need us. I say it again, you're insecure, you're weak, you're scared, and you need us. So next time you start yapping and yapping with the racists, that's why when Marcus Garvey tried to take your advice and go back to Africa the way you told us to for the past 200 years, you got more nervous than ever. Like that song X Factor by Lauryn Hill, they would talk, you about, talk about you, yell at you, but then when you try to, then you say, I can't stay, you know, baby, no, 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 no. Which one's it going to be? You going to kick me out or you going to let me walk? Cause you can't kick me out and then get in front of the door talking about what, where you going? Why are you trying to leave? And some people have been in relationships with people like that right now. Cuss you out, sisters. Call you out your name, but let you try to walk out. Let you try to go over to the person trying to treat you good. Watch them really throw a fit. That's what America did with Marcus Garvey. Market, America abused African Americans in a toxic relationship, but the second we got some pride about ourselves and we wanted to be in parades and everything else, and we wanted to go back and do, do the Black Star Line, the UNIA, and go back to Africa because this man was so inspired by the work of Booker T. Washington that he came over here just to meet him and though he never got to start his own move. Now, you know the story. But the second we say, okay, right? Sisters, the second he say, like color purple, you're black, you're woman, you're ugly, you're nothing. Nothing but the devil keep me from. Once you get some sense of self, you ain't hear what he's talking about. 
you like Celia. You know what? I might be black. I might be. And she was packing up while she was saying it. She was like Tina in the limo. Remember when Tina had the all white on? Oh, check out my shoes today, though. Check out my shoes just because. Just because. I want to appreciate the shoes. Um, no. You got to be lighthearted and have some fun. I don't want to hear you fact, 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 fact. That's no fun. Personal connection. Say that brother did have some shiny shoes. No, but seriously, in the tradition of Ida B. Wells and the investigations, in the tradition of Rosa Parks, as she investigated as a master political strategist, not just some woman that was tired. Now we have Tarana Burke dedicating her life to the least of these people who have been broken like a star in a set. The black woman continues to put people back together. So we salute you, Sister Tarana. And for those of us who didn't take the time due to sexism and ignorance and believe in what these white people saying for what reason, I don't know. We, 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 we extend our true and most sincere um, apologies for our, our lack of investigative rigor. We should have done more, there was more at stake because disproportionately these girls that go missing are black and brown. So we owe it to our daughters and our sisters and our mothers, not just to end rape culture, to admit a lot of problems in society in the ways that we've adopted our oppressors mentality and continue to perpetuate our man on our system. Like we got work to do. Y'all. People get real hype when it comes to Trump. They, yeah, yeah. I talk like this, they be like, um, maybe I'll put half my thumb up. <laughs> but it's all good. That just means we got a lot farther to go and we're gonna go there together. We're gonna work it out. You ain't never gonna see me on no video blasting sisters for being sisters. That's just out of pocket, out of hand, and a quick way to destroy your own potential to have a liberating movement. I love y'all, honor y'all, respect y'all, peace and blessings.